the Ravens put the non-exclusive franchise tag on Lamar Jackson, meaning the teams are now free to negotiate with Lamar Jackson. The Ravens can match whatever offer he's given. If they choose not to, they will receive first round picks in 2023 and 2024. Here we fucking go. Yeah. The, that's a domino right there. Uh, I, to me, this really seems like the Ravens just going like, okay, we're okay. All right, Lamar, we did what we could. We threw out the offers that we could. Lamar is always, always have to remember this. Not that I'm like breaking news. Everyone knows this. Lamar represents himself and as an agent. So that is all these negotiations, everything that Lamar, everything, I'm sorry, that the Ravens say and how they feel and maybe reservations they have with giving guaranteed money, et cetera, et cetera. They have to say to Lamar's face, <laughs> there is yeah. no middleman. There is no, this is the human element of these negotiations. This is why and agents are good. This is, yes. I understand no, seriously, though. when people, it, it's it, the dynamics and the massaging and the yep. back and forths and not having to talk about money with your bosses and not having the bad feelings go back and forth. There's value in that. There's having real value in that. Having a human meat shield is really nice sometimes. That's exactly and, what it is. And, and that's what, that's what you have to remember. So that's why I think when there's these number differences that I'm sure that's happened between Lamar and brass with the Ravens, it's through Lamar. It's to Lamar's face. It's coming off a practice field. Let's talk for a half hour, et cetera, et cetera. So now you get to this point. I think the Ravens, why it's the non-exclusive tag. It makes sense. They said, this is what we're going to offer you. Go find yourself a market. Well, well, Hey, this is what we can do. This we're telling you the truth or, you know, or as much truth as we want to tell you and okay, go, go handle it yourself. So I think that's what they're throwing their hands up, but this is just, it's fascinating. This is like exciting as a, again, as a neutral fan, as someone that observes the league, this is just an unprecedented situation. It feels like, and it's just, it's really, really interesting to see how this is going to unfold and what market does get presented to Lamar or if there is one. The Ravens throughout this process have made it clear from the time that Steve Bishotti came out at last year's owners meetings and said, essentially go to hell to, to the Browns for what they did with Deshaun Watson. Yep. Said it immediately. And they have drawn a line in the sand and that they are not going to give Omar a fully guaranteed contract. Yep. They've made that clear with things they've leaked. And the fact that we don't have a resolution on this heading to franchise tag day. Yeah. Now another team, if you want to, can potentially try to give him a fully guaranteed contract. And it seems like the Ravens aren't willing to go to that place. And if they aren't, and another team is, then we could see a 26 year old former MVP change teams for the price of two first round picks and a fully guaranteed contract. I think mean, that's the other part of this is that a lot of the other deals that even guys like Russell Wilson have signed, and obviously the Sean Watson case is an outlier, but a lot of these guys who've been acquired on these big quarterback deals Matthew Stafford Russell Wilson it doesn't come with a fully guaranteed deal with 250 million dollars guaranteed so it's a lot to give up other than the Deshaun Watson situation which was a perfect storm of I have a no trade clause I, all these different things that were lined up we we would never see anything like this where you have a, a guy that could be this level of player that's available at this stage of his career it's remarkable I, I have no idea how it's going to play out yeah. And I mean, just think about what gets traded for the idea of players, the RG3 yeah. trades, the Trey Lance trade, uh, Carson Wentz trade, Jared Goff trade, what, not, not when they're in the NFL, when they were prospects, what could potentially happen in this year's draft, uh, as you're hoping as the Chicago Bears hold the number one pick. But you see what gets traded for the idea of what these players are. Lamar has proven himself as a quarterback in the NFL as a dynamic one, one of the greatest weapons in the NFL. Whatever you want to say as him as a throwing ability, but as far, far as him as a runner, it's it's un unbelievable. And also, like you said, his age is ridiculous. He's not 30, you know, it's not 29, it's not 31, 26, and he's already won MVP. It, it's it's I mean, again, I'm gonna use the word, it's fascinating. Because, yes, Lamar is a one-of-one one type, or there's more guys getting to his type of player, but he truly is, as a runner, is, real, is ridiculous. And as a thrower, he is a unique thrower as far as he pushes the ball and throws intermediate. Some of the easy stuff doesn't come easy for him as far as throwing underneath. But, man, it, it's just a player that's a true, true tier-setting needle mover. That This is a guy that lifts up his teammates, even in bad circumstances. We've seen what he can do with... Ravens having up and down offensive linemen and weapons the past couple of years. And at times him just take over games. So yeah, the market's going to be crazy. And, that, and like you said, the guaranteed stuff is, 
it, it's that's what's going to come down to it, obviously. But also just I think that's where the Ravens are trying to say is like, hey, we're trying to be fair with you, but you can go see what your actual market is. And but they're only the two first rounders coming back. That's what's interesting to me as well, because I feel like in an open trade market, it was going to be different. But I don't know. There's so, I, I just I'm all over the place because this is how this feels. This situation feels there's so many variables that are getting thrown into here. And now you also have teams saying, yeah, we're already out of the market, which is more even more interesting because some of the supposed landing spots of how that kind of already be seeing get blown up, uh, at least through the rumor mill, at least. I was very excited about the idea of him going to the Falcons on a football level. I, I yes. made that clear at every turn over the last few weeks. <laughs> as we were talking about yes. this because I didn't know how the Falcons felt about him yep. coming away from the combine. Independent of Diana Rossini's report today that they are out and Scott Bear, who works for the Atlanta Falcons media arm, t- uh, tweeted and reported the same thing today. Independent of that, when we were going to do the show before that had been reported, I came away from the combine not thinking that the Falcons were going to chase Lamar. The discussion, and I don't know if this is exactly it, but the discussion they're likely having internally is the same that every team has to have right now. Are we willing to give up all of this for this guy? Because it's not either or. You're not giving up a bunch of picks and getting a quarterback on a rookie contract. You're not trading up in the draft and getting a quarterback on a rookie contract. You're giving up multiple first-round picks, and you are potentially having to give out a fully guaranteed deal to a guy who has been hurt the last couple right. of years. So that is the discussion that you're having. If you're Atlanta, if you're Carolina right now, okay. if you're Carolina, you're looking at the potential avenues you have up the draft where you're likely going to have to trade away a future first round pick next year and maybe even more to go up to four or whatever to get CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson on a rookie deal. So you are paying $50 million a year potentially and fully guaranteed money for the certainty of what Lamar Jackson is. And that is what teams are going to have to decide. Are we willing to pay that sort of tax and create that little financial flexibility for ourselves with the rest of our roster to pay for what we think we know about the player that Lamar Jackson is. It's a fascinating discussion. It is. It is. It, you cross the Rubicon. As soon as you make that trade. This is it. This, this is, is it. who you are. I hit the no, timer and this is it. This, this is, is it. the path we're on. And that's why if you're the if first year of a regime like the Panthers are, yes. I just think, ah, oh, man, I, I just don't know if we want to yeah. lock ourselves into this. So that's, that's now my question, putting you on the spot. Who do you think makes the most sense? Because outside of Atlanta, I have a difficult time figuring out like, oh, yeah, definitely Team X, definitely Team Y. There isn't a big list where it's readily apparent for me that they're the team that would be interested in doing this. The only one, and this is more just like a curiosity thing. I have no rumors of this, nothing. It's the Raiders. To me, I'm a, I agree with you. I don't know what seats are available for Lamar and, and the, what the mindset of each of these teams are. You can say the Texans with their cap space, but the Texans have the, they have the 78 through 80 rating Madden roster. They have so many holes. They want to use their picks, and I think with their timeline as well, with D'Amico Ryan's going down there, I think they want to do it. Hey, we're starting at ground zero right now. I just think there's I, the no Raiders... question about what the Texans can do this offseason. They, they can pick a quarterback. If yeah, they like two. multiple of the quarterback, if they like more than one of the quarterbacks, they know they're coming they're away with one of the two quarterbacks in yeah, this draft. Another first rounder in this draft. It's like they're set to just go on down the path that they want to go down. So that's why I don't think them. The Raiders is the only interesting team to me, but I, I don't even think they have the cash flow for it. Um, to Sean the cash Reed flow a, would be a question, right? So Sean Reed had a nice tweet about this, and I was like, oh, that's a great call about the escrow and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into it, but that's that's I mean, very if important. We, we know there's an there's re- escrow rule in the NFL. With the guaranteed yeah. money, you have to put a certain percentage of it into extra escrow when you give that contract out. You can yes. get around that with contracts that don't have a ton of guarantees immediately at signing. You know, they're like the Mahomes contract is a good example of that where the rolling the guarantees are rolling. So it's you don't have to put it in there immediately. Yeah. With this, if it's fully guaranteed, you got to you gotta have that cash Answer right it's, away. It's a lot of liquidity on hand. And if I'm Lamar, if I'm arguing for why I'm worth this and why whatever relative struggles happened over the last couple of years aren't indicative of who I can be, yeah. I'm pointing to the fact that they put me in too small of a box. Right. The offense that we were running, we had no receivers. We had yeah. no developed passing game. Like you give me an actual NFL offense. That's why I want him in Atlanta so bad because yeah. it's just it because it's so perfect because yeah. everything lines up where it's like, all right, we could see a different version of this guy yeah. than we've seen really since 2019 when he won the MVP. And that's mm-hmm. what I would be saying if I were Lamar. It's not, well, 
there's concerns that I have to be in this hyper specific sort of offense. And that's why you shouldn't bet on me. No, that's wrong. Right. I've been in this type of offense before. I played in it in college. Yes. You give me more and you'll get more out of me. If I'm Lamar's camp, that's what I'm saying to these teams. And But I guarantee you that the Ravens are hoping that teams look at it and say, we don't think we can go down that road because it's too specific of a road. All right.